Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. All righty, well, let's, uh, let's open up in prayer, and then, as Pastor said, we'll, we'll uh, teach the Word and then receive the offering afterward. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to come and receive from your Word, to fellowship around your Word. Father, we know that the Holy Spirit is indeed the teacher of the church. And Father, we just surrender ourselves to Him tonight, whichever direction He wants to go, how He wants to move. Then, Father, we just are open to that. We believe that the Word of God will go forth here tonight into our hearts and make a positive difference and change in our life. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All righty, tonight let's go to uh, Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, and we're just going to read uh, several scripture here. Might read the whole chapter, depending on how we're directed to go, but I uh, definitely want to hit some high spots here. Let brotherly love continue, verse 1. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for where, thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Remember them that are in bonds as bound with them, and them that suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. Marriage is honorable to all, the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as you have. For he hath saith, I will never leave thee, thee, nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. And then verse 7, this is where I really want to kind of zoom in on here. Remember them which have the rule over you. Now let's stop right there for just a second, and let's kind of explain that phrase. Them are those that have the rule over you, are those that are your leadership in the Lord. Here at Faith and Victory Church, that would be Pastor Ed, Pastor Janie. They are those who have the rule over us. Now, see, a lot of us crazy Maddox, you know, you tell us, we've got the rule over you. We're going to go, no, you don't. You know, it, that attitude comes of rebellion. I'm sorry to say, it's the truth. When you say, well, nobody has rule over me, then you are directly contradicting the Bible. Because the Bible says, remember them which have rule over you. And if we're sitting there with our arms crossed and saying, well, I don't have anybody ruling over me, then something's wrong. So we're to remember them. We're to put them in remembrance. We're to know who we are uh, submitted to in the Lord. Now, notice what it says here. Who have spoken unto you the word of God. This is one of the key elements of those that have the rule over you. They speak to you the word of God. We're not talking about people that beat you with a stick or people that are just, you know, want to exercise authority because they want to be a big dog. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about people who have spoken unto you the word of God. They are caring for you. And it goes on to say, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Now, Conversation is a good King James word that simply means manner of behavior. You know, we're to actually consider what manner of behavior uh, those that are, have a rule or authority over us have. Then he goes on to say in verse 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. Now as a Baptist boy coming up, when I heard Brother Kenneth Copeland and Brother Kenneth Hagin preaching the word of God, this verse of scripture came out of some of the things that were taught at that time. We're talking the mid-70s for me, 75, 76, right in there. I heard Andrew Womack on the radio. I heard Kenneth Copeland on the radio. I heard Brother Hagen. All of these ministers, to me, were talking about something that I had never seen as a good Baptist boy. All right? I had just, in 1973, received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, spoken in other tongues at a full gospel businessman's meeting. And I was kind of struggling along from 73 up to around 75, 76 when I heard the Word of Faith message. Well, this scripture, Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever, I heard Brother Copeland, I believe it was the first time I heard him uh, teach it, he was saying Jesus is the same. If he healed in the past, he heals in the present, he heals in the future. He's the same. Well, see, that shook my world as a young Baptist because I had been 
taught in effect. Now, they didn't come right out and beat in the head with it, but the understanding we had was God did great things in the past, but he doesn't do squat today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And if somebody had to get healed, it was kind of like, was that the devil? I mean, really, that was our attitude as Baptists. Now, I'm not, you know, you know, I'm perfectly happy with the Southern Baptist Church. I got born again in the Southern Baptist Church. But doctrinally, there are some issues there. And this is one of the scriptures that I saw, Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. And I said, well, if he's the same, then the same kind of things that happened in Jesus' ministry ought to be happening today. Healings, miracles, signs, wonders, uh, people being raised from the dead. Why would that be so strange to think that people are raised from the dead today if they were in Jesus' day, if this scripture is true? And it is. And then the very next verse. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. Did you know that a diverse and strange doctrine is that God doesn't heal anymore? Now see, a lot of people think, oh, diverse and strange doctrines, that's weird stuff. Strange. No, it's what they're teaching down the road. <laughs> diverse and strange doctrines. Because they're saying God doesn't heal anymore. God, miracles don't happen. Prosperity is not for us. All of those things. You've got to be poor to serve God. All of that's a diverse and strange doctrine. Now, it's, eight, it's interesting to me that verse 8 is before verse 9. Verse 8 says, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. And then, be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. The diverse and strange doctrines are different from what Jesus says, does, yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? I mean, it's simple, but it's true. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, which have not profited them which have occupied therein. We have an altar whereof they have no right to eat, where they serve the tabernacle for the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. Wherefore, Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered without the gate. Let us go therefore unto him without the camp bearing his reproach, for here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. To do good and to behave well, that's what communicate means. Okay, see, we read that and think talk. And there's an element of, of truth in talking because that's part of your behavior. This is talking about the whole realm of your behavior. Do good and behave well. Don't forget to do that. You need to remember to do that. Um, verse uh, 17. Wait a minute. Verse 16. That's where I left off. Do good and communicate. Forget not. For such sacrifices God is well pleased. And then verse 17. That's the other place I wanted to highlight. Obey them that have the rule over you. Going back to this point, that there are those here in the body of Christ that have rule or guidance over us. Verse 17, obey them that have the rule of you. Obey them. Oh, my goodness. See, charismatics, they get all shaky. What do you mean, obey them? You, you, you cult person following after that guy like he's some cult leader. No, 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 no. Obey them that have the rule over you. Remember, these are the people that, that are presenting unto you the word of God. They're giving you the word. And submit. There's that word. Submit yourselves. Now, this word submit is a Greek word, hupiko, don't you love Greek words, which means to surrender or to submit yourself. That's pretty clear. We are to surrender or submit yourself. Now, you know, there are times that we may hear from leadership and they may say, we need to do this, and you kind of go, I don't want to do that. And I like what I heard Pastor Ed say many years ago. It blessed me. Now, you have probably heard me tell this story. But I'm going to share the story. Because it's on me. <laughs> many years ago, Pastor Ed, right here in this very church, said, we're going to take up an offering to buy hymnals. And every charismatic bone in my body went, no, we don't use hymnals. We use wall hymnals. We don't need books. Well, the, the reason for it was, very reasonable reason, by purchasing the books, we are licensed to use the songs that are within those books. So there was a legal, proper reason for buying hymnals. But inside me, 
There was just something that just rose up and said, no, I'm not going to contribute to that hymnal. You know, because I was a crazy matic. That was my background. Pastor's always talking about his heritage was, was Pentecostal. Mine was Baptist and crazy matic. Okay? And so, as soon as that rose up in me, now what was that thing that rose up in me? Rebellion. Because my leadership had said we need to buy hymnals. And I said, and as soon as I started to say no inside, never say anything outside verbally, but inside I said, I need to give big. Because I need to break this. I need to break the rebellion that I'm feeling toward my leadership because he said we needed to buy hymnals. Then bless God, we're going to buy some hymnals. And I contributed toward that a fairly large amount. And the whole time going, Lord, who'd have thought that Brother Bill would ever buy a hymnal on purpose? You know, I mean, that was really... I had to fight with myself internally to do that, to obey. I submitted and I obeyed. And guess what? It was blessing. Because I found an area in my life I needed to break down. I needed to become submitted. I needed to become obedient in that area. Now, obey them that have the rule over you. Submit yourselves for why? For they watch for your souls. Now, I've read that and I have not really fully meditated the meaning of that. You know what I mean? You read something in the Bible and you've read it so often or you've heard it so often you just kind of let it go and just get right by. And I started meditating on that this afternoon. Started thinking, what does that mean? Watch for your souls. Well, first I've got to define my terms. The soul here is not the spirit man. It's the mind, the will, and emotions area. It's the, it's the suke area, not the pneuma area. Okay? It is what the, the Greek definition says, the animal sentient principle only, the, the mind, the will, the emotions. Now, let me ask you something. As a believer, haven't you found that your mind's what squirrels off? <laughs> really. In other words, you're born again, your spirit's right with God. You know, you have to do something with your soul. Renew it to the Word of God. And what did we say the leadership was doing? They were giving us the Word of God. Okay, So that should be affecting us. It should be changing us. It should be keeping our soul, spirit, soul, and body lined up with the Word of God. Now, I said all of this toward a purpose. And that is to share with you a personal thing that happened to me in the last few weeks. Um, you know, and I wasn't squirreling out. I wasn't going crazy or anything like that. But I was just minding my own business and I started having a tooth pain. My tooth was hurting me, and it got worse, and it got worse, and it finally, I, I put up with it for a few days. And I kind of tepidly said, Lord, heal me, hallelujah. I, you know, I didn't really knuckle down and pray. You know what I'm saying? I just kind of, yeah, Lord, I know I'm the healer of the Lord. You know I mean? It was just very half-hearted. Well, that means my spirit, I mean, my soul my little emotions, was not really in line. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't really where I needed to be to get in the Word and to really believe God and receive my healing. So I finally got to the point that I thought, I'm suffering through this all one weekend. And even the Sunday morning, I'm sitting back there running the video, and I was hurting the whole time. I mean, I'm sitting there just kind of just, just folding over from the pain. And I thought, Monday morning, I'm going to find me a dentist. It's the last thing I do. So I went to the dentist, and he poked, and he prodded, and he looked, and he x-rayed, and he did all these things. He says, I think we're going to need to do a root canal. Well, I've had root canals before. You know what? They're not any fun. They really aren't. And the thing is, it was under a gold crown. And I asked him, what are you going to do? Are you going to have to take the crown off? He says, oh, no, we just drill through the middle and take the root out. And then we patch the, the gold crown. I thought, that doesn't sound like any fun at all. You know? So I begin to have a change of mind. <laughs> I thought, you know what? Tonight's prayer and healing service. This was Sunday. I said, I'm going to believe God and receive my healing, and my pastor's going to lay hands on me. Well, I became a lot like the woman with the issue of blood. <laughs> you know, I said to myself, when I get there, pastor's going to lay hands on me, I'm going to be healed. And I just kept thinking that and saying that, 
I, he's going to lay hands on me and I'm going to be healed. Well, that night I got here and I'm sitting back there running the video and pastor's talking about starting communion and I came up here in front and I looked at him and I said, aren't you going to pray for anybody? <laughs> Do you remember that? I was kind of brusque. You know? I said, aren't you going to pray for anybody? He said, well, yeah, come on up. <laughs> and I said, he's going to lay hands on me. I'm going to receive my healing. Well, it began to amend from that very hour. So, Monday morning, it's better. Tuesday morning, it's a whole lot better. And now, no pain at all. Now, I thought about that, and I thought, praise the Lord for my pastor. Praise the Lord for my man of God, that I knew that I had confidence that if I went down there and he laid hands on me, even if my mind is not where it ought to be, even if my soul, my will and emotions, really isn't as focused as it should have been, He's going to, in effect, bridge the gap through his prayers because of my confidence in him. Now, again, doesn't mean I didn't have faith in God. Doesn't mean I didn't have faith in the Word. But I had faith in my pastor to be in the position to pray for me and to bridge that gap because I knew I wasn't where I needed to be. Now, you know, Everybody, oh, Dr. Bill, aren't you God's man of faith and power? No, sometimes I'm God's man of paste and flour. You know, sometimes I'm not where I need to be. But praise the Lord, God knew that there's times that you need somebody to stand in the gap. You need somebody you have confidence in to say, pray now. Which is why I was so forceful that I wanted pastor to pray for me. So let's keep reading here. They watch for your souls as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable unto you. Now, you know, if I was one of these church members that was always kicking against leadership and didn't want to order hymnals, didn't want to do this, didn't want to do that, then, the, you know, when Pastor Ed got before the Lord and the Lord said, what about Brother Bill? And he goes, well... You know, praise the Lord, Brother Bill did the best he could. And, you know, and, and he had to do it with grief. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't want that. I want him to say, whoo, hallelujah, Brother Bill was right there. He was serving. He was doing what he, he was faithful. You know, I want him to be able to joyfully tell the Lord that, yeah, he had it together. And those times when I didn't have it together, I said, Lord, I'm going to church and pastor's going to lay hands on me and I'm going to get healed. Or whatever. Whatever the situation is. I've had situations where I've gone to pastor and said, Pastor, what do I do about this? I've prayed. I've sought the Lord. I just, I'm not getting any solid direction. And he said, well, you know, I'm, I believe it's this. And I thought, wisdom of the Lord. I've shared with you before this example. You know, a lot of good examples that look, make me look bad. That's okay. <laughs> I was at work and I was fussing and fuming about the direction things were going at work, and I was fussing and fuming about management, and, and there was a couple other guys who had done the same thing. And they, unbeknownst to me, this happened right around this time frame, they got called into Human Resources and kind of read the Riot Act. You need to straighten up. Matter of fact, they put them on uh, probation because they had basically gotten outside of rank within the business, if you will. They tried to push their agenda. Well, I was kind of listening to what they were saying. I was, yeah, that's right, that's right. And the day they went to talk to the head of this particular department when they got in trouble, they fully expected I would be going with them, and I probably would have had it not been for that Sunday morning. See, this was a Monday. That Sunday morning, I'm sitting here and I'm kind of, in the back of my mind, I'm kind of feeling about there are people at work. Blah, 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 blah. And pastor points out at the congregation, kind of in the general direction of where I was, and said, somebody here is about to lose their job because you're doing something, going to do something stupid. And I went, yes, sir? <laughs> I mean, it just hit me between the eyes, you know. And I knew right then my heart and attitude were wrong. And I needed to repent. So when these guys, we're going to go, we're going to go now to us. I said, y'all, y'all have fun. I'm just going to stay here in the office. <laughs> and sure enough, I mean, they almost lost their jobs. And that's exactly what 
the Spirit of the Lord had pastors say, somebody here is about to lose their job. Well, you know, save my job, save my income. Yeah, now that's just pastor being obedient to say one thing. And look at the end result. Look at the, the benefit. And see, here's, here's the point that I really want to make this evening is, God has put pastors, has put, have put leadership in Faith and Victory Church, in our church, over us for our benefit. Getting healed was a benefit. Not losing my job was benefit. All of these different things are benefits that could have gone a different way had it not been for our leadership doing what they're called to do. And see, this is, this is to me what exactly what he's talking about here. Obey them that have rule over you. Submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls as they, they that must give account, that they do it with joy, not with grief, for that is unprofitable to you. And then finally, pray for us. Now see, he's talking to the church. And he's saying, these folks, they're leaders, and they're over you, and you should obey, and you should submit. It's to your benefit. And then he says, pray for us as leadership. And so, praise the Lord. I think we ought to pray for Pastor Ed. Pay, pray for Pastor Janie and the leadership of this church to do what God's called them to do, to get wisdom, to get revelation, to understand what the direction God's taken them. I mean, that's why I'm so excited about, for instance, the Shekinah Glory meetings. That's not just, oh, well, let's have a meeting. That's the Holy Ghost arranging that. The timing is critical. And they're coming in at just the right time, and they're going to be led by the Lord to do and say some things. And we've been praying and believing God to be in the right position like an appointment. An appointment that's going to be critical to us individually and to the church and to the whole ministry. I mean, there's some, there's some things coming. I fully believe there's some things coming. I get excited about, because I'm just involved in it, I get excited about the technology. You know, we were just talking before service about how these cables, we sweated and thought and pondered and researched and did everything over these cables and finally found the right cable with the right shielding and the right everything to make it work. I get excited over stuff like that. Now, a lot of people say, well, rather be getting excited over wire. Yeah, but I don't see it as wire. I see it as a benefit to the church and the ministry of the TV ministry out to the Internet, people all around the world that are receiving from the Word of God that would never have had the opportunity. I look at it in the, the big picture, the broader picture of all the people that are out there watching. We've heard testimonies. I mean, the, the testimony pastor gave that time about the, uh, the pastor in Africa, I believe it was, who said, I just put your, your program on and let the people hear it. You know? And, I mean, think about that. Has Pastor been to that little village in Africa? Probably not. I'd say he had. Most of the places he's gone, been up in Europe, or uh, Thailand, I believe. But he hadn't had a chance to go to Africa. Well, he has had a chance to go to Africa through the TV ministry. And so, I don't see it as, oh, they're out there playing with their technology again. No, we're doing something that God's called us to do. And that's why everything's falling into place the way it has, the finances have come in to do it. I mean, we, it's amazing to me the technology we have, you know, at our fingertips. And the knowledge to use it that has come through years of research and training and study. And then I, t I was telling Pastor, I got a call, it's been almost a month ago now, from Dr. Larry Allison. I don't know if you've heard of Dr. Larry Allison, but he's a pastor up in uh, Osage Beach, uh, Missouri, I believe. And uh, uh, he is the president of the International Convention of Faith, Churches, and, and Ministries, which I'm a member of. And uh, I was at the last yearly international convention in Branson, Missouri, last year. And so, and I'll be going, let's see, this is March, April, I'll be going next month to that meeting. Well, he called me up personally, out of the blue, and Dr. Bill, um, I want to talk to you about your Roku channel. Do uh, you think you could do a Roku channel for ICFM? I said, I've already built it. Talked to uh, uh, Dr. Winget about it and, and, and several of the other, uh, uh, Dr. Jim Willoughby, who's one of the, some of the other board of directors, said, I already built it, it's, it's ready. All we got to do is just pull the plug and, you know, it's ready to roll. Really, praise the Lord. So I started talking to him about all the technology that we're using here. He said, how about coming down and teaching a workshop at the International Convention? And uh, you just teach on some of the things you're doing and, and uh, the technologies you're using and so forth. 
So I put together a little, uh, I don't know what you call it, a, a thumbnail of what I was going to teach on. And I sent that down there and they looked over and said, perfect, this is exactly what I'm looking for. And basically my title is going to be how a ministry of any size can use the internet to reach the world. And isn't that exactly what we're doing? A ministry of any size can use the internet to reach the world. You say, well, yeah, if you've got all this background, experience, and knowledge that folks here have, well, now we can share that with them. So I'm going to do this workshop. I'm going to have materials. We're talking about a list of parts and things that will work together so we don't have to go through the problems we've had to make it work. And say, if you want to do it, quote, on the cheap, here's how you do it. And we'll be able to share that information. Now, think about, we're talking a thousand pastors or more from all over the world because it is an international convention. They've got people coming from Europe, people coming from Australia, people coming from all over that will be coming to this meeting, potentially hearing this, and taking that knowledge and going back to their church and developing this. Is it no wonder that perhaps we can use this kind of technology to reach the world like we're supposed to? Hallelujah. So see, I see this as, as big stuff. I see this as important. And I have a heart for it, yes. I mean, it is an area that the Lord's really directed me to, to get into. But see, I did not know I was going to go quite this direction. But at any rate, um, back in August of 1980, God spoke to me personally. I was pastoring a church at the time, and the church we had founded was Word of Faith Ministries. And that organization is still the organization that I use today. It's a nonprofit, 501c3 organization. But I had been meditating on, I need, I need to know what the vision of this ministry is. And I, as a pastor, I had been meditating on that. And this was a Sunday evening service. I was sitting down, about to get up and teach. And the Lord just said, here's your vision. And I wrote it down quick as I could. And it didn't change a word of it. And the, the vision he gave me was proclaim the word of faith, be a showcase of ministries, train people to fulfill the word of God. Three simple things. And it was patterned, I know this, it was patterned very much after Buddy Harrison's vision because that was what pushed me to think I need to have a vision. I need to have something that I can lean on and say this is what I need to do. So proclaim the word of faith, pretty simple, preaching the word. But showcasing ministries, when he gave me that, I thought, Lord, what's that mean? And he said something to me that I'd heard Buddy Harrison say, you'll never get out of the helps ministry. But you're going to be a helps minister to ministries. And I want you to be like a display case to display the ministries that you have ability to come in contact with. I want you to be a helps minister to them to help them get their ministry out there. And look at where I'm going to be next month a showcase of ministries. And I saw that and I thought, Lord, I mean, I told Belinda, I, you know, about broke down and cried. I mean, that, that is a fulfillment of a large part of what the Lord's told me, is to be that helps minister, be that person that can help ministries. Over 30 years of computer science background, uh, training BFA in, in painting, printmaking, photography, and art, which includes markup and, and so forth of publications. Uh, I was on the annual staff, the newspaper staff in high school. All of this knowledge, all this information, all this stuff, I've, I've been to training for publications because we did that for the yearbook and so forth. Went to Chapel Hill, to UNC Chapel Hill and had a, a training course on that. And then audio video, I went toward masters in audio and video uh, at UNCG. All of these things coming together to make what I'm doing now I believe, a critical part of what this ministry is doing. I'm not trying to get the big hit here. I'm just saying the Lord will use you wherever you're at. Dick, with his knowledge of technical things, has been able to pull stuff together here, uh, and, and, and the music, and, and getting Nathan started on the guitar, and all, all those different things. A little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there. We're all called to do a part. And we're all called to submit to this authority that we've been placed under for a bigger mission, a critical mission. And I see it as a tremendous opportunity. Pray for us, for we trust we have a good conscience in all things willing to live honestly. But I beseech you to rather do this, that I may be restored to you the sooner. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, 
Make you perfect in every good work to do his will. Hallelujah. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will. Working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And see, that's what I'm talking about right there. He's working in me to do things. Pulling from my background. Pulling from my knowledge. Pulling from my studies. Helping me to work and be well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And I beseech you, brethren... Suffer the word of exhortation, for I have written a letter unto you in few words. Know you that our brother Tim Timothy is set at liberty, with whom, if he comes shortly, I will see you. Salute all them that have the rule over you, submitting to them. And all the saints, they of Italy, salute you. Grace be with you. Amen. So we read the whole chapter. I figured as close as we were, might as well read the whole chapter. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I trust you've seen some things from this. The importance of leadership, the importance of authority, the importance of recognizing and knowing those that are in authority and submitting to them, not just in the sense of, Pastor, what you want me to do? Oh, yeah, that's true. But when I have a need, I start thinking, I'm going to get my pastor to pray. See? And we're meeting each other's need in the body. There was a big doctrine many years ago. Body ministry. The body ministering to itself. Well, there's a truth there that we do minister to one another. But it's under the authority of the local church. It's not weird, freaky, out in the world, do whatever you want to do. We don't have a leader kind of thing. I talked to a guy one time that says, I don't have a pastor. I don't need a pastor. Funny, the Bible says you do. You know? What do you mean, you don't need a pastor? Well, he's basically got the big head. He's just saying, you know, I'm so spiritual, I don't need a pastor. Well, la-di-da. I'm so spiritual, I know I do need one. <laughs> Amen? So the thing is, recognize those, submit to them, and know that they do it for your good. Like I said, look at all the, the dumb things I'd have missed, or did miss, because of my pastor. And that's just a few examples. And, of course, praying for Belinda and getting her healed. You know, and there's a lot of other people praying too, but still, pastor coming, grabbing my hand, sitting there over the Bible and believing God with me, that meant the world to me in that situation. And the, the, the tremendous miracles we've seen. I get excited over a tooth, but, you know, Belinda got a new heart. You know, other people have been healed of cancer. Other people have been healed of all these other things. I think it's, it's no small thing that we are referred to as, our, as my miracle place. This is the place to come. And I say this in the intro to our videos. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. It's right in there because I mean it 100%. We're in a place that is ministering to people on a, a level that a lot of other places aren't. They may have the glitz and the glamour and the this and the that, but we got the goods here. Amen? Praise the Lord. Well... I'll get off my high horse here. You know, I get talking about my church and my pastor. I get excited. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we'll go ahead and close it right here. But uh, I tell you, I am excited about the things we've got ahead of us. You know, we look around sometimes and we say, well, we could have more people here and all that. Yeah, but, you know, and that's true. Yeah, I'd love to see this place packed all the way wall to wall. But there's some people out there, thousands and thousands of people that are watching this every single service. And they're being blessed as though they were sitting in these seats. Praise the Lord. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.